Good morning, my brothers and sisters. As the leader of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it is my responsibility to ensure that our church remains strong and protected. As such, I'm here to share some important instructions regarding how we should lie for the Lord to protect our church. Lying to protect the Mormon church is often preached as a necessary evil in order to grow the kingdom of God. We tell members the old phrase, you need milk before meat. The truth is missionaries and believers of the faith are expected to be good examples to the world and to be honest in their dealings, except for one area, because lying can be a tool to spread the message of the church and to protect its reputation. Lying can be a form of self-preservation as it provides a layer of protection from criticism and opposition. It can be used to uphold the church's reputation and to keep members from being persecuted or discriminated against. In addition, lies can be used to obscure the truth about the church's history and teachings, which can be beneficial to the church's overall mission. We certainly don't want everyone to know that we didn't let black couples get sealed in the temple for over 100 years. Your church leaders take lying for the Lord very seriously. It is important to protect our church financially. We tried to create shell companies to avoid financial reporting requirements. We felt this was a practical way to ensure that the financial resources of the church could remain secure and would not be subject to the scrutiny of the public or government entities. And it would have worked too if it wasn't for those meddling antis. Second, we should be careful about the information we share with investigators. Missionaries should not tell people that they will have to wear special church underwear for the rest of their life, nor should they share information about Joseph Smith's extramarital affairs before he received the revelation about polygamy. Third, we should also be careful about how we present information to the public. We should be careful to avoid giving the impression that we are hiding something. For example, when discussing the church's stance on polygamy, we should emphasize that the practice is no longer practiced by the church. Finally, I want to emphasize that even though it is sometimes necessary to be less than truthful in order to protect the church, we should always strive to be honest and forthright in our speech and actions. The Lord expects us to be honest and truthful in our dealings with others, and we should strive to live up to this expectation. Just not about the church finances or church history. It is important that lying to protect the Mormon church should be done sparingly and only when absolutely necessary. Lying can be damaging and can erode trust, which is essential for the church's success. Therefore, it should be used with caution and only when it is absolutely necessary. In conclusion, lying to protect the Mormon church can be a necessary tool in order to grow the kingdom of God, although it should be used sparingly and only when absolutely necessary. It can provide a layer of protection from criticism and opposition and can obscure the truth about the church's history and teachings, which can be beneficial to the church's overall mission. I hope this has been helpful in providing guidance on how to lie for the Lord to protect our church. May the Lord bless us all and guide us in our efforts to serve him. Thank you.